Hey guys, Rob here with Hammer Halo Projects and welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new here. Back in the shop today in this video, I'm going to show you how I hook up a vacuum flow for the purpose of cleaning out my vehicles. If you're like me, you do clean out your own vehicles, you're probably using a shop vac or even the house vacuum. In most cases, I'm fighting my way through the job. Either the, the hose is too short or the cord isn't long enough or whatever the case may be. This I picked up at a thrift store for 20 bucks, came with all the attachments, and best of all, came with a 30 foot hose, which reaches every corner of my shop, which will definitely make the job go a whole lot easier. So let's get this monster sucker sucking. Okay, so first thing I do is get this canister hung up on the wall. It came with this bracket. I went out and picked up just some basic anchors. These hold 148 pounds each, so should be ample to hold this canister up. The salesman at the thrift store indicated that the vacuum wasn't working the way it should and I would be buying it as is with no returns available. By undoing the buckle latches on either side, I was able to separate the dust canister from the motor and what do you know? It was full, and I mean full. Now looking at the business end of the unit, I found what I guessed was a filter that obviously couldn't filter anything. After trying to clean it with my shop vac, I realized it comes right out, so that made it a whole lot easier. It took about 10 minutes of vacuuming just to get it like this. So how disgusting was that? No wonder it's at the thrift store. Somebody probably didn't realize they could clean it out. Here I'm trying to locate the best positioning for how high off the ground I wanted this thing. The key here is to have it high enough off the ground to effortlessly remove and reinstall the dust canister when it's full. Once I determine the height, I then mark the bracket location on the wall. After marking the bracket hole locations, I can then drill out for my anchors using a half inch drill bit. Now I will mention at this point, the so-called 148 pound anchors failed and I ultimately installed a plywood backer board directly to the studs and then anchored the bracket to that. Here I'm reattaching the exhaust pipe, which I think is supposed to be vented outside, but I'm just gonna let it vent into the shop. It's a little noisier that way, but I can live with that. I also messed up by installing it too close to the wall. Therefore, I wasn't able to access the canister buckle on the left side. Looks like the only thing I did get right so far was the plug location when I wired my garage. Oh well, live and learn. All right, now back to cleaning up this dust canister. I dumped out what I could and the rest had to be scraped out as it was literally stuck in there. Some people. It seems a bit ironic that I'm vacuuming out of vacuum. Okay, here's my professional opinion on what happened with this machine. Somebody owned it that didn't care to know how it worked and likely saw this sticker and assumed it cleaned itself and used it and used it and used it until it could suck no more and then decided this thing doesn't work and gave it away to the thrift store because the amount of dust that was in that container was so packed and so solid somebody wasn't using their noggin for what it's supposed to be used for i'm using my noggin are you using yours if you don't know how things work then you shouldn't have the right to own it so the hose itself comes with two wires attached to it one is the low voltage wire that you would use to turn the machine on and off when you plug the nozzle in the wall. I'm doing a direct feed to the machine so I won't need this wire, as well as I won't need this wire which is for 
the power head because I'll never use the power head in the shop cleaning one of my vehicles. In a typical house application, you would see a main vacuum line with feeder lines attached to select locations throughout the house. The low voltage wires would follow these runs and connect to each nozzle outlet, essentially creating an on off switch at the nozzle. In my garage application, I'm eliminating all that and simplifying the process by wiring directly from the motor to an on off switch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove both of those from the hose. So it looks like there's a little bit of crap at the end of this uh, nozzle feed. So I'm just gonna use 120 grit sandpaper and sand it down. So what I'm gonna do is just push this into the existing pipe and secure it in there with some tape. And that'll be my direct feed in. So I wasn't happy with the way it was angling itself on the wall. The top of the canister was out and the bottom was in and touching the wall. So here I'm just building a bracket with the same radius as the canister in order to bump it out at the bottom so that it sits evenly on the wall. Okay, so I ended up mounting the hose rack and accessory rack right beside the unit. Also ended up bumping the unit out so it was level with the wall. Um, and I did that by just creating a wood bracket behind it that pushed it out the same distance as the upper bracket. Then I added the switch right down low here so it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Nobody's gonna hit it with anything. So all in all, turned out pretty good. I'm just gonna see how this uh, rack holds the accessories. So what I'm gonna do is put this up into here and it kind of snaps in. Don't want too much of a bend in that. So nice curve there. Now I'll just hang up these accessories that came with the kit. So last thing I gotta do is mount this hose reel, but I really wanna hit a stud in this wall, so I will try to find one here. Okay, let's hope for the best on this. Now how awesome is that? That thing sucks. Well, I'm super happy how this turned out. If you ever get a chance to come across one of these, I think they're a great addition to any shop, especially for uh, auto detailing and that kind of stuff. So and if you haven't subscribed yet and you like DIY everything, think about subscribing. We'd love to have you and we will see you on the next one. Peace.